In this video, I'm going to go over constructors in C++. So constructors are a special type of member function that are called when an object is created. And constructors, generally speaking, do the setup work for an object. So they'll do things like initialize the member variables of an object. Let's go over an example. We'll make a class for representing cats. And our cats will have three private member variables. They'll have a name, a color, and a favorite toy. We'll make a public member function to print out the cat's information. And we'll call it print cat. So we'll say void print cat. In this function, we'll just output the name, color, and favorite toy of the cat. So we'll output name, and then the name value, and then color, and the color value. And then finally, favorite toy, and the cat's favorite toy. followed by an inline. So now we've got a basic class here. With this class, right now we have no way of initializing these member variables because they're private member variables. This is the kind of thing though that a constructor, generally speaking, does. So we'll make our first constructor. Here we'll say cat, open bracket, close bracket. And in here, we're gonna have a function that's going to initialize the name, color, and favorite toy values. So we'll say name is equal to unknown. Color is equal to unknown. And favorite toy is equal to unknown. So this function here is going to be called when we actually create the cat object itself. Let's go over an example. Here I'll say cat, cat1. And then we'll put the cat information using the function we just created. So we'll say cat one dot print cat. And we'll put an end line after this as well. And if we save and run this, we should get cat one with the name, the color and the toy being unknown. And that's exactly what we get here. So with this constructor, it's being called when we create the cat object here, when we instantiate the cat object cat1. And it's sort of happening implicitly. It's not like we have an open bracket, close bracket here. It's being called automatically when we create the cat1 object. Now, the one thing with our constructor is that it takes no parameters. But because it takes no parameters, it can't really set these to anything but default values or maybe random values. What we'd like is a constructor that can take parameters so that way we can set these member variables based on input to the constructor. So let's go over an example of that. Here I'll say cat string n, and this constructor is going to accept a string n. That's what we'll call the parameter. And we'll set the name based on that parameter. So we'll say name is equal to n. For color and favorite toy, we'll still set those to unknown. So we'll say color and favorite toy are still going to be unknown. But now that we have this constructor here that accepts a single string parameter, we can create a cat object using this constructor. Let's go over an example of that. I'll just copy and paste this to save a bit of typing. But here I'll say cat2 to make a second cat object. And this time I'm going to give an argument. So I'll say here spot. So because we provided this argument here in the same way we would if we were calling a function, we're going to end up using this constructor here. So we can have multiple constructors. They have to have different prototypes. There can't be ambiguity between which constructor is being used. But it's clear here that this constructor is going to be the default constructor because there is no argument and therefore it's going to have to use this one. And it's clear that this is going to use the second constructor there because there's the one argument here that's a string. And so it'll use this one here. If we save and run this, we're going to find that we have a cat named Spot where the name and the color are still unknown. And that's exactly what we get here. We could also make a constructor that would accept three arguments. So let's do that next. Here we'll say cat string n for the name, string c for the color, and string ft for the favorite toy. 
and we'll set all three properties now. So we'll say name is equal to N, color is equal to C, and the favorite toy is equal to FT. And we could try this constructor out as well. So we'll copy and paste again. And I'll make a third cat object. So we'll say cat three, and we'll supply all three arguments. So we'll say Garfield, orange, and we'll say ball of yarn for the toy. And then we'll output cat three. And this constructor should set all three member variables. And we should get that Garfield is an orange cat that likes a ball of yarn. And we do. Now our constructors can also use default parameter values. So for example, here I could say string FT is equal to, and I could say laser pointer. And now if we didn't supply this third argument here, FT would be set to laser pointer. So if we take out ball of yarn here and we save and run this, Garfield is now gonna have a favorite toy of laser pointer. We can also define constructors outside of the class definition. So for example, we could just have the function declaration here, the function prototype, and then we could put the function definition outside of the class definition. We'd have to say cat colon colon to do that. And I'll actually take away this part here because we've already set that default parameter value here. So if we save and run this, it'll work the exact same as before. The only difference is where we've defined the constructor. And so that's the basics of using constructors in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.